nice to see you. Oh, really good to see you as well. Did you sleep? There are many instances of good home care being provided in the UK. However, with an ageing population and continuing economic pressures, the commissioning of home care that provides what older people with complex needs say they want is a challenge. There is evidence that some people and their families are dissatisfied with what they receive, as well as public perception that home care provision can be poor. I think some of, some of the commissioning of home care that gets bad press is the stuff that is um, kind of time and task um, based and which uh, purchases um, often very small blocks of time um, for home care, um, uh, in particular the, the 15 minute contracting of home care that's had um, a lot of negative um, coverage in, in, in the press over the last period is, is an example um, of that. In Bristol, St Monica Trust has a reputation for providing good residential care and sheltered housing. In 2012, the Trust launched a home care service for older people, which provides support for individuals, funded from a variety of sources, including self-funders and continuing health care. We felt that there was a need of a service to maybe challenge some of the, the, the current models of working. One of our key values with St Monica Trust is about well-being of the individual and it's something that's you know, at the centre of our work, about dignity, respect, overall well-being and, and that's our primary aim. But we're very different in the sense that all our staff are salaried, we pay travel time, we put emphasis on staff training, we put emphasis on personal qualities, skills, competence. And our relationship with the customer is one based on how our customer and our, our carer form a relationship together to, to meet the needs of the customer. So that's been our primary aim. So we have supported people with end of life, we've supported people obviously end stage cancer, we've supported people with COPD, long term problems with COPD. And then we've also supported people who are not at end of life, but are living with complex illnesses day to day and, and maybe have other, other you know, clinical needs, for instance, colostomies, catheter care, a, a wide variety. What I do need to stress is they're not nurses, so they're not actually undertaking what we seen as a nursing duty. So, for instance, if we are supporting a customer, there is a need to engage with the local GP practice, the district nurses or the hospice, so that we've got this care plan that we're all working towards and we support each other to work towards that care plan. Everything should be put in that care plan and we build on that care plan as often as need be. It gets reviews so that that person's care they feel is personal to them and their needs are being met. Are there additional um, considerations you, a care worker, has to give when somebody has complex needs? Yes. We have lots of different complex needs. We also do end of life, we visit people that are terminally ill, and you just have to adapt your skills to that person because no two people are the same, no two cases of dementia are the same. They affect people in different ways, they affect the families in different ways. And you have to see where their aspect of dementia is affecting them the most and work with that. And once you've, once you've done that and you've been able to do that, you'll find that they will build a wonderful relationship with you and the families will build a wonderful relationship with you. The afternoon, and Tracy pays a second visit of the day to Beryl, a woman with vascular dementia, who's cared for at home by her two daughters. Deliver all of the personal care needs first thing in the morning and then go back later in the evening to give assistance with helping the customer get ready for bed and make sure they're settled and positioned comfortably as well. Beryl's daughters, Sally and Rachel, previously used other home care providers, but didn't feel the services and support given met Beryl's needs in a person-centred way. The sisters agreed to be interviewed, but requested their mother's face not be shown in full. Hello, Sally, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you, and you? Yes, good, how's mum? Yeah, she's good. She's oh, wonderful. To see you. Wonderful. Beryl. Oh, hey, Rachel, um, you've decided to look after your mum um, at home. Can you talk about that? I think it's it was an understanding that we always had that um, mum loved being at home um, 
and it was it was never really a a question for us that we were determined between us that we would keep mum at home and care for her in an environment that she was familiar with. It's marvellous to do mm. what we do. It's hard work, but it's a privilege. It is a privilege for sure. We've had many very special moments. And what does good home care mean to you, Sally? It means continuity. It means a face, a friendly face coming in regularly to see Mum, to come and hold a hand, smile, talk quietly to her and build up a rapport, a good relationship with Mum. Your mum was an incredibly private person and I think from a respect point of view that's an important mm. thing for the, for the carers coming in to be um, respectful of this particular situation, um, you know, respect, empathy, understanding um, and to be able to build a, a rapport with us as, as mum's main carers. There are so many things to consider. At St Monica's we have um, uh, our key liaison person, Tracy, who we know that we can call at, at any time um, of day, but um, there was a, a few weeks whereby she wasn't able to come in. And when she came back in again after that break, um, with Mum's particular condition, it, it's all, she has no verbal communication, it's all non-verbal communication. And Tracy came in on this particular day and mum looked up at her and said, you're back, you've come back. And it was, it was you know, really a special moment um, for both, for, for all of us here. Very emotional. Because it's very, um, you know, you don't often hear mum's voice and to hear her not only speaking, but to be able to say that, that to Tracy. And I think that's an absolutely prime example of how important it is from for a provider to 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 listen to um, the carers, the family, uh, and understand that particular conditions need particular types of care support. The St Monica Trust approach to person-centred home care is built on the recruitment of the right staff and ongoing support. This includes training developing skills of care workers to work with individuals and their families, taking an integrated approach to meet complex needs. They're not nurses, they are care workers, but it's really important that they get a broad spectrum of, of the different aspects of work they might get involved in. So ultimately we, we have a number of carers who went through some intensive end-of-life training to the point where they could be our trainers. So even within our team, two members of our staff actually deliver bespoke end-of-life training to our team. So they've done the work with the customers, they've been out there, they've looked after customers with end-of-life needs, they've engaged with district nurses, they've engaged with St Peter's Hospice. We've formed those relationships, we've learned from them directly as well as in the classroom. And then those, our own carers who are, who are trained in this area do group workshops for our team. So we really can actually focus in on the type of specific customers we're supporting with specific needs and then, and then support them with those needs. The St Monica Trust is achieving high levels of satisfaction from people who use their services. Nationally, challenges remain for the commissioners of home care. I think we need to see a shift towards something that is a bit more um, nuanced than, uh, than paying for blocks of care um, and especially small 15 minute blocks of care um, to something that allows uh, providers more flexibility within the terms of that contract um, to do um, what they think is necessary with the expertise they have to deliver the best outcome um, that they can for the money that's available. What are the kind of arguments that a commissioner needs to make to justify a, a contract for high quality home care? The sorts of arguments commissioners would need to make to make the case for investing in high quality home care and paying perhaps a slightly higher rate um, for that relate to uh, the important role that community-based um, provision, um, home care delivered to people in their own homes has in keeping those people away from more uh, acute services delivered in institutional settings. If you are investing um, uh, creatively in uh, your home care market um, uh, you, you would certainly hope that that would result in fewer people um, requiring high level uh, intensive um, support within um, residential and nursing settings. The Sky Guide on Commissioning Home Care for Older People with Complex Needs draws together the published evidence on the subject.
When you do it and you do it right, it is completely rewarding because you leave and that person is so happy. They're so happy. You feel, and that's the whole purpose of being a carer, is that person enjoys that visit with you and looks forward to you coming again.